So he talks then about dancing in country houses. Uh, and of course, like he's gone back to his childhood and then this moves on a little bit. So they're not in any, they're yeah. obviously in the order of the way they came to his mind. So this, one, this little story is entitled Learn to Dance for Man Away. I went to a neighbour's house in 1929. I had finished school that year and got my first pair of long trousers. When you finished school at 14, you were as free as air to Cayley at night, but had to be home by 10 o'clock. The house I started to dance in was in our townland, Drumlock, Derry Lynn. Two nice girls in this house, and us boys, used to love getting out for a swing with them. If you could swing, you thought you could dance a lot of a lot of swinging in the common dance in manner called a set of quadrilles. The mother of the two girls, a good lilter, and a neighbour man good on the comb. So that was providing the music, mm-hmm. obviously. Another main... Another man often helped to lilt, lilt the camels. Lilt, the camels are coming, and he give out the figures as well as seven steps to the dresser and back and swing around the same as the sack of barley. When we danced the forehand reel, the door had to be opened to let out the dust. We all, we all got mugs of spring water from a can on the dresser or a drink of ale plant in the jar on the window. Old women constantly warning us to mind the dresser that we were going when we were doing the double swing. Old man in this house used to knit socks and gamble them with his old mates in the room. A pet pig in the corner, in a box in the corner, was out one night for crack. He would bite your legs, but a rude gentleman spat a tobacco spit in his eyes. We soon settled down, but he would, but we wouldn't go back. But we couldn't go back. Every winter there were there was country house dances, and you could go without invitation as long as you had manners. Songs sung at country house parties and old men opened the ball, often holding back a ch- the chair to dance the clouds reel. If a big crowd for tea, sixpenny tin cans used for drawing tea instead of small teapots. Some nasty fellow put a gollop in the can and had the dancers running out. Oh, jollop, I think that was it. It was like a lot form of laxative. <laughs> and had the dancers running out for shelter all night. <laughs> Other games played by boys not asked to the dance. They would tie the door outside, prop the windows and stuff the chimney. Then the door would have to be taken off its hinges. Mostly a couple of fiddlers and maybe an accordion and country house dances lasted till daylight. Country house dances were great entertainment, but people weren't respected for having them. They were reckoned old fools. I always was proud to look back on those happy times in our Derry Lynn parish and I welcomed the twelve o'clock dances because you could dance every night if there was one. Some dances called a raffle, because you paid some money for charity. Now you are paying for jackpots in pubs, whether you dance or not. I was lucky I was let out with the straw men to get money for a couple of straw men's dances. I got the job of dancing in clogs to face another maid, so I danced in nearly every house in the parish. Not so many dances in parish halls, and it was a different place to get out to dance when you were only starting. When you got into longer trousers, you got manly, but it was more difficult to say something into a girl's ear in a big hall and listen to what she would say back to you. Excuse me dances had just started when I got out, and you mightn't have her turned the second time until some fellow would whip her from you. <laughs> then the lady's choice came out, and that was crack for the boys sitting round that didn't dance, watching who the lassies would run for. If you weren't asked, you would be safer to go home that night, but and if you were asked, you'd put on a bit of a show. The dances in Timor Hall in 1930 cost one shilling, and you got tea, loaf, bread and jam. The tea was served during dance hours at the back of the stage, about 20 at a time. You got a ticket with a number when you paid at the door, and they called up in lots of twenties. About 60 would be a good average at that time. A few fiddlers and accordion, local parishioners, would be the band, Nearly all was the same music men. As years went on, and more money in the parish, the dance bands first started first. The dance band in Timor Parish was Melody Six. All wore black and white caps, and it was a good lively band. When the gramophone came out in 1930, one in every town land, the craze for dancing started. The jazz had hit every parish, and all dance halls tried to ban it. A notice in all halls, jazzing not allowed. And when, a, and when to ban a craze, it spreads like wildfire. 
I remember an old fiddler playing for a few girls for us to jazz. The style we had then was you shook your shoulders, put out your backside, and weaved it, your, your, weaved it through the kitchen. The mistress of the house asked the fiddler what he thought of the new dance. I'll tell you, man, <laughs> I'm just saying what he said. I'll tell you, man, it's arsing about and not good at that either. Then the polyglide and the Lambert walk and bumps the daisy and hook of up. Next to invade the dance scene was the carnivals and bigger bands, and next the ballroom of romance. Joe Livingstone in Lissenski ran 34 annual balls in his rec- recreation hall, opening with a dress dance and sit-down supper, all for half a crown with McMahon's band Clo- from Clomas, and they came free to Joe's opening ball. Joe told me he had 400 on the opening night and all to the packed house. The dancing kept up to the late 1960s, then it had a few boom years, then the pubs and hotels took it up, and it's there to stay. I remember the first girl paid for in Timor Hall was the talk of the country uh, next night after a dance. Everything that happened at the dance would get an airing, and when the girl that was paid was for was not mentioned, she inquired how much was the dance last night. I don't really understand what he's saying there, but maybe it means when he paid in a girl. When I started... Uh, going to the local halls, I had no bicycle. So if you wanted to do business, your mileage was limited. So, in other words, if you want to leave anyone home. So, he goes on, uh, you know, he talks as things have developed, it's not more as much from his childhood. Um, so, you know, it, it gives you the flavour again yeah. of the fact that it all started in the country houses and the devilment and the, and the tricks uh-huh. that the people got up to that didn't dance, that they were tying, tying the doors. And he would, he, he, Paddy would expand on that when he would be doing a talk to a group. He went into bigger detail that the boys using hay ropes to tie the handles of the doors to, to keep everybody in, and of course with the heat of the fire. And then if somebody got up on the roof and, and smoked, put put torf into the into the roof into the chimney, it smoked the place out. Then the door had to be open, and then they couldn't get the door open, so they had to take it off its hinges. So that was a very that that was entertainment to people long ago. But they hadn't television. Yeah. Only one house had a gramophone, and so there was no music. So they made up fun, and sometimes it was a tinge of maliciousness in it, you know. So, um, 